Last week also marks 10 years since Malaysian Airlines flight MH370 just vanished from the sky after departing Kuala Lumpur with 227 passengers and 12 crew members on board. It's the world's greatest aviation mystery. Travelling over the South China Sea en route to Beijing, flight MH370 disappeared from radar screens about 40 minutes into its journey. There was no mayday call, no known flight path and no wreckage. According to the presumed sequence of events in the final report, the plane deliberately left its planned route north to China, instead cruising south for about six hours before coming down in the southern Indian Ocean when it ran out of fuel. Search operations combed the area, but no trace of the aircraft's main body or any of the passengers or crew were found. Of the three million components, just a few fragments washed ashore years later on the East African coast. So pressure is now mounting on the Australian government to launch a new search for the missing plane to gain closure for heartbroken families. Editor-in-chief of AirlineRatings.com, Geoffrey Thomas, has been following the investigation really closely. He joins us now live from Perth. Geoffrey, thanks so much for your time. Uh, so we're a decade, a decade on now and we're still no closer really to finding out what happened. Should this search continue? Oh, look, absolutely. I mean, we've found... Uh, we, uh, we want to find things. We, 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 uh, we can't have a situation where we don't know what happened. We found the Sydney, we found the Titanic, we found the Hood, we found the Bismarck. Uh, it's in our DNA to find things. But more than that, we want closure for those uh, relatives left behind um, of those passengers and crew. Uh, and also, from a technical point of view, we need to know exactly what happened. Is there some latent fault in the Boeing 777? I very much much doubt it. But um, uh, we need to know from a technical point of view uh, what went wrong. So there is a marine robotics company that is offering the Malaysian government a no find, no fee policy, but Malaysia won't take them up on it. Why is that? It's my belief that the Malaysian government actually does not want to find this aircraft. Uh, they have, they're always sort of ducking and weaving um, and it, uh, they don't want to find the aircraft because they don't want to find that it was the pilot um, that was responsible for it. Uh, it could open the government up to, to all sorts of compensation claims because they own Malaysian Airlines. Um, so from that perspective, um, mm -hmm. it's generally accepted within the industry that Malaysia does not want to find this aircraft. Hey Jeff, um, this new evidence which came through last year from British aerospace engineer Richard Godfrey, what was it and why was that evidence so groundbreaking? It's, yes, it's, it is incredibly groundbreaking uh, technology. It relates to amateur radio signals. Um, all of those have been stored in an international database since 2008. Now, there's 1.7 billion of these radio signals go around the earth every, every year. Um, and uh, Richard Godfrey's been able to go back and access it from 2014. And what happens is when an aircraft flies through one of these radio signals, that disturbs the signal and that disturbance is recorded. It's, it's a little bit like a giant fisherman's net cast over the earth. Every time a plane flies through that net, it breaks that little bit of the net. And over the six hours that uh, MH370 continued to fly, uh, Richard Godfrey has tracked 313 disturbances uh, at 95 locations and has been able to pinpoint uh, a, a spot uh, where this aircraft has crashed. So originally the search area was 120,000 square kilometres. Now we have a radius of 30 kilometres. So it would be much, much easier to find this aircraft um, with this new technology. Look, there's conspiracy theories everywhere you look on this. Do you think they are a help or a hindrance to the search? Look, tragically, there are. And there's been a, over 120 books written about the disappearance of MH370. Quite extraordinary. But all, every time we have a conspiracy theory, it gives the Malaysian government another reason not to look for this aircraft. If, if we simply had the facts and the science being, uh, being discussed in the wider media and social media, then the Malaysian governments would ha have nowhere to turn. They could say, um, you know, we could say, here is hard evidence. Now what they say is, well, you know, is it in Cambodia? Is it in Afghanistan? Is it in Diego Garcia? We hear, we hear all these preposterous theories. Mm. 
and also it sends the relatives on a ghastly roller coaster ride of uh, of emotion. You know, is it really here? Is it really there? Um, and it's it's very disruptive. Jeffrey Thomas, thank you so much for your time this morning. It's a pleasure. With the cost of living.